Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? I see we have some people waiting in chat. I also would like to point out, too, that sometime in the last couple of days, we crossed 100,000 lifetime views. So thank you guys very much for that. I know I'm only thanking a, a very fraction of uh, the people that watch us, but uh, it is, it's amazing that, that we could accomplish that um, because of this awesome community. Hey everybody, good morning and welcome to sunny, sunny, extremely sunny behind me. Um, the window is white. Uh, sunny day in Denton, Texas, uh, where we are, well, well, I am, I am at home. Justin actually went into work because he's silly. Um, hello, hello. Yes, it is time, it's time. Um, so it's a lovely day here. Finally, finally, after days of like being in the 50s and low 60s, today is supposed to be 82. Yes, this is why, this is what I live for. Let me see. Good morning. Uh, sound is low. I haven't altered my sound, so not sure why it is low. Because I haven't touched anything from yesterday. Unless I need to like rotate my little speaker thingy a little bit, but should be okay. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Yeah, I know, right? Well, this is why I live in the South, Coobs, and why I'm about to move to a coast. A warm coast. <laughs> Uh, okay, good. So somebody, yeah, adjust your sound. If I sound low, yeah, then adjust your sound. Uh, apparently we're okay. So yeah, Malvernus, it's okay. It can be you and we'll still love you. I promise. <laughs> All right, cool. So I hope everybody's doing well today. It is Tuesday. Uh, yeah. And, uh, oh, Hey, I could show you guys Weasel. Um, where did I put Weasel? There he is. I finished Weasel's base. So I'll put him down here so I remember to show him to you. It's a really simple little weasel base, but then you can see him actually, actually done. I'm going to take him into Ron uh, later today, working on getting a bunch of stuff done for Reaper before I move. Um, I was just talking to Justin, saying we, we should uh, push our streaming more in this time when everybody is bored. Uh, so we'll see how that works. I'm very curious to see how things are going to be when I start back up. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that makes it even more crucial, Miss Ann, that you uh, get to California and get your setup going. Well, I'm thinking of moving a little early, and I am carrying all of my setup with me in the car so that I can actually, like, the only thing I'll miss is a, dex, a desk, but I might be able to bring a little table and work it. I don't know. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I'm not certain what I'll be able to do. Uh, maybe I'll be sitting cross legged on the floor, like, you know, with my stream set up. <laughs> I have no idea. And I wouldn't be surprised too if you guys see a lot of like starts sorts of like um, extra streams. So, yeah, yeah. For instance, in order to keep you guys as entertained as we can and to kind of add to the schedule, maybe mm -hmm. you might end up seeing me stream random nonsense, I mean, <laughs> actual nonsense, just because it's something and gives you guys something to kind of laugh at at least. Yes, yes. Yeah, I just uh, Tasland. I'm moving into a two bedroom apartment with David, and David is already ensconced in it. And so I have been essentially cutting back on my belongings extremely. Um, I don't. Plus, I don't want to pay to move any more than I have to. Uh, so yeah. So we're just kind of. We'll see. Like I could technically sit up on the kitchen table, but I really don't want to monopolize it. Monopolize that space. I don't like it. 
Um, it's just, you know, we'll see what we can do. Reaper karaoke stream. Oh my God. Get Ron up here. Um, and her, and Adrian, <laughs> but, uh, hi, hi Rhonda. It's good to see you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. Once I get out there, maybe I'll do some extra streams if we're still all in like lockdown, like, and going crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Right. So yeah, Jed Rose, I don't drive until at earliest I'll drive on the 5th. I was originally planning the 7th, but I, ha I at least have to be here um, for the movers to pick my stuff up and for the maids to come in and clean my house the next day. So I have to be here through the 4th. Uh, and after that, I will be driving for three or four days cross country with Kiri. Um, and maybe with David, we're still talking about whether he's going to meet me or whether, you know, how things are going to go. Um, yeah, moving companies do charge by weight. Correct, Chris Hera. And I was quoted on what I have. So if I add to that, there is the chance I will be charged more. So I don't want to, I really don't want to buy anything. Um, so, I mean, I could go out there and think about getting a little table, but then I'm going to get my desk is going to arrive. So, yeah, you know, it's that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's it's like a very contained madhouse, right? Right, Al Capone? <laughs> It's, uh, I mean, I, I, I've been joking that I'm moving to Plague Central, but technically that would be New York. So um, we'll see. California got pretty serious about a lockdown early. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'm not immune compromised. So I'm going to take my chances. I mean, it's, it's, it's growing everywhere. So it's like, I'm, I just don't mind. I mean, David hasn't been at work for two weeks. So he's, and he's not sick. So that's good. Hey, everybody. Yes. I don't know about organized and premeditated nonsense. I think random nonsense is better. Uh, yeah, we could, uh, yeah, right, right. I could do like streams from the road, right? I could, uh, get up, get my uh, phone set up and, uh, get a GoPro and just go for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Coops. I mean, that's the, that's the goal, right? I am essentially, I am realistic about it. But I am also pragmatistic about it in that if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. A lot of us might get it. I'm not panicking about it. I'm trying to observe basic safety about it. Trying not to take overt risks about it. You know, me driving alone with my dog or with my uninfected boyfriend cross country is not terribly, uh, you know, terribly risky, all things considered. You can do a lot just staying in your car and, you know, hotels are trying really hard to uh, clean very well and to keep people spaced out. So... Ah, Kiri's Cross Country Caravan. Aw, Taz Lynch, that would be so cute. That would be so cute. She's such a cutie. She's currently uh, with my ex while I'm trying to clean up the house and move, and I had to take my car in so I couldn't carry her around. So she'll be back hopefully today or tomorrow. But yeah. I mean, I'm taking reasonable precautions, right? But I'm not going to panic. I refuse to, like, go and freak out. I have friends who are freaking out like guys i hate to say it but the stress is gonna hurt you more than the virus at that point i refuse to freak out it's like um i've been through too much medical shit i'm just like all right you know if i'm gonna catch it i'm gonna catch it and i'm just gonna stay away from other people and keep myself away from other people you know it's like you can be you can be like you don't have to panic about this people shouldn't feel bad about not panicking about this right it's just I think sometimes people freak out at other people who apparently aren't as freaked out as they are. And that's like ridiculous. That's like, no, just because right. I'm not freaking out doesn't mean y'all should lecture me. It just means that I've come to a place in my head where I know what I'm doing and I have a plan of action and I feel fine about it. So, you know, speaking you of can. plan of action, did you see that uh, uh, as of uh, this morning and mm -hmm. tonight, Tarrant County is a part of the shelter in place? Uh, so it's in lockdown. Ah, uh, no. That's important because I'm the only employee in this company who lives in Tarrant County. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you've are you violated your lockdown already by coming to work. No, it's not in effect until tonight at midnight. However, oh, okay. I, don't, I don't think, I think since I work in a county that isn't doing it, I don't think it's an issue. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not like I'm, I'm not out and about within the county doing stuff. I think that's what they want to avoid. Yeah, exactly. So um, we're painting a dragon dude. We're painting, we're shading, working with shading with complementary colors today. So we're just going to putz around. Justin's an they, outlaw, yes. They, they can't keep me from streaming for you guys. They'll have to lock me up to do it. <laughs> you could stream from home, though. So tomorrow morning, you know, you, you can keep oh, in mind yes. that I'm not going to be in. Correct. 
you and I will be able to get the entire day done from home. It'll be yes, fun. exactly. So and it'll be dragons all day and all night and all everything until I get these dragons done. Um, I realized I forgot to put veins in a section of wing, so I may do that on stream tomorrow uh, early and then do more scale painting in the afternoon. But the dragons, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty okay about the dragons, so we shall see. Um, all right. Do, do, do. Yeah, I mean, people. Like, you know. Uh, we have never take our streaming. Yes. Just hit streams from jail cell, Twitch from the inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, inmates have internet, right? I have no idea. Maybe limited access? I have no idea. But anyway, so let's get to, like, uh, shading and doing uh things things and stuff where's my green where's my my awesome naga green there it is all right i'm gonna go oh. to mini cam and we can continue right. with our nonsense right it uh, we'll only wait. for only for you Rhonda. i'll do that but only for you justin in county jail dressed like a blues brother that sounds fantastic let's do it jailhouse justin don't start singing elvis you know what, Monahos? Uh, jokingly, that might be the new segment when I am streaming. Is it may be, I may call it Jailhouse Just. Just because the alliteration, you like it? Yeah, absolutely. All right, we have a Dragon Guy. So Dragon Guy's number is here. It'll sit there for a little while. On a slightly more serious note, um, I hope everyone is safe and healthy and, and sound and enjoying at least what they can of this quarantine. Yes, hopefully you are all getting a lot of painting done. If you aren't, I will come to your home when the quarantine is over and yell at you. Yeah, zero excuses at this point, guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. unless you have kids and you got to care for them, I understand that. But you have all the time in the world get to get the best paint job you can. And all the time in the world to watch our videos to ensure that you get the best paint job possible. Yes, and heck, if you have so, kids, get those little buggers painting. Shut them up. Absolutely. Uh, so we've got some dragon green, and I'm going to put a little bit of naga green in it. So when you are using complementary colors to shade... Um, red and green is two, are two of the easiest, I find, because we have two colors that work great together, and that would be dragon red and dragon green from Bones. Um, I actually briefly covered this in a PDF for my Patreon a while ago, um, so that's patreon.com slash paintingbig. If you have not checked it out, that's my shtick, soon to be my main income, with Reaper as my part-time income. Um, so... Dragon Red and Dragon Green work very well together. The biggest problem with using them for shading and highlighting is just that they're very similar sh um, shades. Like this one is only a little, the Dragon Green is only a little lighter than the Dragon Red. But they still work pretty well as jumping off points. So let's just do his little scales here on his neck. Do, 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 do. I'm just going to use my Dragon Green. I added a little bit of the Naga Green to lighten it up a bit. Um, so usually when you do this, you do want to have, obviously, a, one of your colors be noticeably lighter and noticeably darker, but sometimes you can get away with colors that are very close together like this because when mixed together, sometimes they will make a darker color. So you can do, um, there are two ways to use complementary colors as shading. One is to do a succession of mixes, and one is to just do, to just paint in your shadows in the complementary color. And uh, both work, and it gives you different effects because uh, mixing the colors will definitely create a muted color as your shadow. Whereas um, when you directly shade with a color, you may not get that transitional kind of muted color. You're just going to go from green to red. So let's do this. Get his like greens kind of blocked in. And uh, continue them under the neck. This is dragon green, which is 9410, I think. Yeah. Do, do, do. Mr. Dragon. I'm just going to get his whole head. Why not? I'm going to grab over here. Yes. So yeah, dragons all the time from here on out. Um, just to get dragons done for Reaper. Do have an awful lot of stuff to, uh, to do and play with. And of course, packing is totally kicking my butt right now. So let's do some wet blending, and I'll show you the mixture that you get by mixing dragon red and uh, dragon green. So what you get is it kind of goes into kind of a brownish gray. Let's just, I'm just going to do the underside here. Now there you can really see the red, but you can kind of see that it's, um, that it's turning brownish. 
as it mixes with the yellow. Now, one thing you have to watch is, and we'll talk about this more with yellow and purple, is um, if I was using a very yellow green and trying to shade it with a red like this, it would immediately go orangey um, because yellow plus red is orange. So for, for best results, try to pick um, two colors that are equidistant kind of on the color uh, wheel. Like you don't, uh, with purples, you don't want to use a very uh, bluish purple because then you will definitely go green um, unless that's what you're aiming for. But keep in mind those color interactions, right? I typically use a reddish yellow and a reddish purple and it balances out pretty well, but it does make an orange um, instead of just a, a browned out uh, mess. So sometimes it works for you, sometimes it works against you. Always do a mix of your colors um, in advance to kind of figure out how they look. Let me get my glasses on here. But you can see how, how I'm shading with red. Now, oop. Oh, no, I'm dropping things. This always happens. Um, glasses, come to me. There. Do, do, do. I'm going to put this on. Now, one thing about mixing complementary colors together is it is one way to mute the colors without um, them having a lot of issues with uh, losing vibrancy. Like, if you mix a brown or a gray or a black into a color, it's going to get pretty muted pretty fast. Like it's going to go kind of grayish. It's going to lose a lot of its vibrant tones, but you can keep a lot of vibrancy when you're mixing a complementary color into your original color. So, uh, so yeah, so let's see here. So I've still got some wet paint here so I can do again, a wet blend on his eye to shade this socket there. Still have a little bit too much paint. It is definitely drying slower today. It's been very wet here. We only just had weather blow through. It was very wet yesterday. All right, little dragon guy. So here you can see, I hope, you can see that, that I've got just a dark color back here, but I've still got a bit of red here under the neck. Um, and if I want, I can just continue to build that red up. Now, complementary colors are also weird in that they really make each other look more intense. So right now I'm downplaying the red, but if I leave a little suggestion of red down here in his underside, what it will do is make the green appear brighter. The same is true in reverse. If we paint something red and try to shade it with green, it, the green will make the red appear brighter. Um, this works also when you're just painting a model in general. If like I decide to give this guy red armor, it would make his green scales look brighter and the red would look brighter also. So complementary colors, that's their main function with each other. It isn't necessarily that they go together, but that each one makes the other one look more intense, um, which is why red and green and blue and orange and yellow and purple are such eye-popping color choices. Uh, yeah, it's a dragon man, Coops. Yeah, Holly Berry's a lot brighter, though. See, that's the thing. If you're, if you're trying to do this and trying to avoid Christmas, what I usually tell people is to go darker or lighter than your standard colors. I personally really like, like, dark greens with pinks. Like, especially ancient oak with pinks can be a really pretty uh, color scheme. So don't just think about, like, the rainbow bright version of the color, right? Think about the light and dark versions of that color when you're thinking about color schemes. Um, I just put out... Uh, a couple days ago, a PDF about choosing colors that is about color schemes for my Patreon. And um, that's really the, the tenet of it. I give a whole bunch of different ways you can put together color schemes, but you always got to remember you shouldn't always think in terms of Christmas or, you know, bright colors. Is like if you're thinking of a yellow, remember that a yellowish greenish brown is also a yellow. Um, the, the bottom line is if you look at the color and you think, oh, that's yellowish, then it counts as a yellow visually. So... Let me see here. So let's highlight up with some Naga green. If you can see that color, hopefully. I'm gonna slide this. Unfortunately, he is white, so it's hard to see. But I kept some of the hint of red in that, uh, in that shadow. So essentially it creates a very interesting visual effect. It's not just green. Um, Do, do, do. Oh, I missed a, a Michael Wilcox question, I see, and it got answered by Al Capone. Um, my favorite color book, by the way, is, um, although Blue and Yellow uh, Don't Make Green is a great color book, um, but so is um, 
the mini's not based in white's cranky head it's a bones it's a traditional bones so it it was um it was just white it wasn't one of the gray ones uh, also uh thanks for the twitch prime matt nuke um but yeah the other color i love is betty edwards color um she gives some of the history of study of color and like uh, cultural references for different colors and uh then she gives you a bunch of exercises that you can work with to try to understand color a little bit better i just love that book uh, i used to recommend it in all my color theory classes i still do i'm just gonna get his little mouth there there we go i'm just putting a little bit more shadows in then we'll add a little more highlights and I may intensify the red a bit more too. But you can see how mixed together, they naturally create a darker, more muted color. And it is a very good shadow for this dragon green. Betty Edwards color, Al Capone. Another great color book is by uh, James Gurney, who did the Dinotopia books called Color and Light. Also a fantastic book. Those are probably the three that come to mind that I have on my reference library. I don't really, there comes a point when you just have to start working with color and stop reading about it. Just like with painting, you have to actually put a brush on a mini and just stop watching tutorials. Um, but yeah, Betty Edwards, Bird with a Brush, you're right. I like her teaching style. It's very clear in that book and she definitely shows you comparative um, exercises to do. I have decided that I am totally going to make a color random encounter table, a la Gary Gygax D&D, &D, um, where you roll a D6 for your first color, and then you roll on successive tables to, like, mute the color, add white to it, add black to it, da-da-da. And then you roll on a separate table for a color scheme, so you might get split complementary or straight complementary, or you might get uh, secondary triadic or, or, you know, all sorts of things. I think that a random color encounter table is a thing that must exist in our hobby, and I am just the person to do it. Now, I got a very, very bright yellow green for my highlight here. I mixed in some uh, lantern yellow to my Naga green. This might be a bit much. We'll see. It's very, it's a very virulent color, and it's muted out a bit, so I may actually add some white to it. I think I do want to add some white to it. It's a little... Sometimes when you add yellow for highlights, you can just get really, really saturated, but you don't necessarily get a lot lighter. Um, so sometimes I like to add a drop of white and that tends to help. Yes, I figured a random encounter, random color encounter table uh, needs to happen. Maybe I'll put it up as free public content on my Patreon. That could be fun. Have people mess around with it, suggest other tables. I guess if I do that, then, well, no, no, it should work. It should work in, like, three or four tables. Or I might need a flow chart <laughs> to go with the tables. If then, if your color is, starting color is light, then your next color will be dark or medium in shade. Oh, there we go. All right, let's just highlight some little scales. Yeah, the white really made it, um, made the highlight pop out. It's probably a little bit too much, but I just want a quick, quick highlight here. There we go. I'm going to come in and highlight my scales that are in the the red, the red dark red area with more of a dragon green. Just a little bit of highlight. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, except that Nomad, um, my color encounter tables are actually going to be useful. <laughs> um, the point is actually not comedy. The point is to actually give you a working color scheme that might get you out of your color comfort zone. Because I get in color ruts big time. Like, I have been in a purple and yellow, i.e. purple and gold color rut for the past, you know, two years almost. It's getting old. So, and I also tend to reach for secondary color triad a lot. So I'm trying to get myself out of the color rut. And I was like, well, I could use a random table to do that. It would make me paint something different. Um, so I actually want to set you guys up for success, but also push 
your ideas of what um, how to make a color scheme because like I was looking at analogous color schemes and thinking those might be interesting and I was looking at split complementaries uh, which not many people use but could also make a very cool color scheme so you know things like that I really want it to be usable uh, and not comedy I want you to come up with a good color scheme and then if you've used the table enough you'll start to get a feel for that sort of thing and go, oh yeah, well, this is a light color, so my next color should be dark. I know that without even looking on the table, right? So uh, things like that. There's certain basic basic rules of color theory that you absolutely can smash with, uh, with, with time. Um, any rule of color can be pushed and broken uh, if it's done skillfully. The key is skillfully. You have to, you, you have to learn to walk before you can run. Um, every old master knew this. They're like break the rules, but only when you're only when you're very good at them. And I'm just highlighting a little bit down here. All right, so green shaded with red, and now I can actually bring my red into it. Yeah, bug lips. We all have that, right? We we have all of that. Uh, we uh, we all have that color uh, color rut that we get into that we love. Uh, if your main colors of yellow and blue, you can deal with a primary uh, color triad HM Road Dogs, so red should be your automatic go-to. Um, because red, yellow, blue is the primary, uh, triad, triadic color scheme. So you always will be good with red, yellow, and blue, or any two of those colors, and you can always use the third one as an accent. Now, what you should also remember is that you can actually, like, slide that, uh, that third color a little bit. Like, you could go with a more purplish red. You know, and it would probably still work fine. The main thing here is to make sure that you're using, if you're using muted colors, that you continue to use muted colors. If you're using bright colors, you should continue to use bright colors. And uh, if you have a colors a lot in the same range, like everything is really light, then you should go for a darker red when you uh, go for that. You should always reach for contrast, always. Now I'm going to take this red, and I'm actually going to bring more red in now that it's uh, the mix is dried. I want to suggest more red down under here. And also I want to add red in it around his eye. And red here. I'm just painting in my shadows at this point. So wherever I want a shadow, I'm putting it. And I'm just intensifying my red a little bit down at near the bottom. Now I don't want it to come off as though he is... Um, red on his underside so I have to be careful with this and if it gets too bright I'll knock it down with a little bit of green I just want it to look like a natural shadow and that's real close so let's get this out of there so it's not hard um vim and aqua no primer is needed for bones uh it's fresh out of the box um I I never prime my bones I don't see the need I never have problems with them um I just wash them so it's, uh, it's just the way that for some reason it's the way that Master Series paint bonds to bones. And we discovered it very early on after we ordered the first batch of bones. Um, we were actually trying to see, uh, how much punishment bones could hold up to. So somebody like we did things like dropping them from, you know, two stories. We did things like running, backing over them with a car. I'm not joking. This actually happened. Um, but we noticed that even when backed over with a car, the paint would stick to the mini like far it really well. Um, so essentially if you grind it off, it'll come off, but I have never found that, um, that I need priming. I mean, primer, the point of primer is to get paint to stick to the mini. If the paint sticks to the mini already, you're fine. Um, and since I wash them, it removes any oils or mold release that may have been present. And so I find that I can even use thinned paint over a washed bones with no problem. I just, I never prime bones. That's just the way it is. I saved my primer for my, uh, since I buy expensive primer, I saved my primer for resin models and, uh, and metal. Right. And if you want to prime them, do. I mean, I just never do. Um, I, I just don't see the point to it. If I don't have to do it, why would I add the extra step? Unless I want a specific color as my base. That would be the, and even then I probably would just reach for paint and not primer. So part of me is part of the reason is just that some primers do react with bones. So I just don't even see the point. If I don't have to uh, risk it, I don't see the point of doing it. 
And people will argue with you over this, but really the answer is, well, does your, does your paint rub off your model? Then try priming your bones. If your paint doesn't rub off your model, you really don't need to. So red and green, woohoo, fun, fun. So you guys can see I've got some red in my shadows. I intensified it a little bit. I didn't get too crazy with it. Let's do yellow and purple because I did that on the seahorse and uh, you guys were all like happy about it. So I'm gonna show you on the shield here. Uh, yeah, yeah, R Rhonda said, when demoing the bones for the first Kickstarter at PAX, we would throw them on the ground and ask people to step on them. I had one kobold start to go at the ankles after four days of that, but apart from that, they were all fine. Yeah, I just, Vima Aqua, I just, uh, I, got, I have a plastic mixing bowl. I fill it with hot water and I put dish soap in it and I then I throw the minis into it and I swoosh them around like for maybe, you know, 30 seconds, just, you know, put my hand in there and, and slosh them around and rub at them. Um, and then I rinse them very well. Uh, again with hot water and I let them dry in a towel overnight and then I find that I can paint them and the paint sticks just fine One, two, three, four. we'll do this now here is where I've decided um, I like the orange color I get by using a reddish yellow and a reddish purple if I used a bluish purple I would get more green if I used a uh, a greenish yellow then I'd get more of a neutral tone more of a brown probably so this is where you really kind of think about your pigment interactions. Um, if you've got a reddish purple and you know that that means there's a lot of red in there. If you've got an orangey uh, yellow, you know there's red in there. So you know that those two together are probably going to make orange because you're mixing yellow and, and a lot of red along with a little bit of blue. So it's going to give you a muted orange. Um, this is runic purple and lantern yellow. I like this combo. Um, you know, you can do the isopropyl, yeah. I've, I've seen that too, just, just like with resin. Um, yeah, but again, it's, it's, and you're using a solvent. I mean, I tend to just go for natural uh, more than chemical these days, but it's all, it works, right? And once we actually can find isopropyl alcohol again, as you point out, Rhonda. Yeah, serenic purple is the best purple. You didn't hear me say that. I have no favorite children. So about two drops of runic purple, four drops of yellow. Let's see what that gives us. Do, 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 do. It's going to give us kind of a brownie orangey color. It's kind of a pretty color. So this is what I mean when I say that by mixing complementary colors and using them to mute your colors, you can keep a lot of the vibrancy. Look at how vibrant this is. Like this is two complementary colors mixed together. You'd think you'd get mud, but it retains a lot of the strength of the yellow. Um, a lot of the, the really, really intense uh, vibrancy. So you, you're muting it, but you're not muting it very much. So if you, if you really want to mix shades for your colors, but you don't want to like them to turn to mud or get too gray at, grayed out, mix in a complementary color until you find a combo you like. So yellow. This is Lantern Yellow, 9407. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, I'm getting a little foamy because I'm painting it fast. You can see this paint is thinned a little bit, and uh, other than the foamies, it's sticking to the bones just fine. I'm not getting any puddles. Thanks, Doug Sunseth, for the chemistry. Oh, I lost sound. I'm here. I'm here, I promise. We're just hoping the internet holds out. Everybody's trying to kill it by like streaming all the time and like streaming their movies and stuff. Well, what did I see the other day that somebody was begging uh, Netflix or yeah, Netflix to like broadcast their stuff in lower res so it wouldn't kill the internet, I don't remember. Well, uh, well, not only that, but Twitch I've noticed and this is all across Twitch because of the incre insane increased traffic um, lots of streams, especially if you're not partnered. In our case, we are partnered, so we have far less of it than other streams. Um, you you end up with a lot of like buffering or brief offlines or real stuttering because their brand they, they just can't handle it. Like their service can't handle it. Right. Yeah. Um, candlelight is just a little lighter than lantern. Al Capone. Um, lantern has a touch more red in it, touch more orangey. Essentially, it's a very very warm yellow. Um, and then uh, candlelight has more white in it. So 
essentially this is more saturated of a color. It's not as, um, it's, it doesn't have white added to it significantly like candlelight does. So this is a good like shadow color for candlelight a little bit, um, but it's a very subtle shadow. And it goes quite, quite yellowy over, um, you can see that it's orangier, but it does go quite yellowy over uh, white. Alrighty. No, wash them though, Venom. If you're not gonna prime, wash. It's, it's at some point, you need some sort of surface treatment, usually. Sometimes if you're using paints like totally full strength out of the bottle, you can uh, get away with um, not priming at all. Like I've seen bones do that, but sometimes you will come to a spot where the bones are starting to beat up and not want, uh, the paint is going to beat up and not want to do it. All right, so let's just keep, treat this as a round curved surface and start brushing my orangey color under it. Let's see. Oh. I did not mute my uh, Discord notifications. Hopefully they will stay kind of quiet. So on a rounded bulging surface, your shadow is going to be kind of crescent shaped because your highlight's going to be like right here. Actually, let's do that. Let's get some white in here so that it looks right. Yeah, it's probably my, it's my, my Discord Sharky. I'm just hoping that people don't tag me while I'm in the stream. Forgot that my, my uh, painting big Discord is on the same account as my uh, Reaper. All right, so just for... Mocking in some highlights here. So for a round surface, you have a round highlight and you blend it in. There. And I can add more of this. And if this is not a metallic yellow surface, then you can just highlight and shade normally. Ah, let's see here. Oh, we do not do a uh, freeze on this stream, Dilbert Dog. Instead, everybody who subs essentially is added toward a, an AMA that everybody can ask questions and have me answer their painting questions. Um, it's just uh, the logistics of mailing all a bunch of stuff out, uh, especially because I'm going to be remote soon. Um, we're just a bit a bit difficult, so we decided to yeah. go that way. And actually, the writing here on the wall, too, just to kind of give people a heads up now. There's a decent chance that if we have to prioritize workflow here for people placing paid orders and such, um, if we have to run with a skeleton crew, for instance, because of a lockdown, um, then those people will much will likely be prioritizing other orders over freebies being shipped out. Yeah. So you could see a, a big reduction in the freeze, but... That's, that's once again, that's a could. We're not really certain because the, the waters are murky, obviously. But uh, free is, is, it's possible that it declines a lot in the next, you know, however long. We're going to try it. It just be may, it may be a lot less than it was. Yeah, because we've been going nuts and uh, we probably don't need to go that nuts. We're being very generous as it is. But with this channel, with this particular show, it really, the point is really the knowledge and not a free. So we thought that the AMA was a far better reward. There we go. Got some highlights blocked in. So what you could see is an increase in streaming because we'll do a lot of remote stuff because I'll start having like, uh, I'll start reaching out to a lot of different streamers. We'll do some interesting stuff, I think. Um, for instance, we may have some, some Reaper hosted type remote d and ing maybe from home. You might, guys might see that. I'm, these are ideas that I'm working on, for instance. So I might coordinate with, uh, Frank at Nightheart, and he may run a game for us that we, you know, you may see Ed and Ron do uh, do some filming and some D&D game on our channel, maybe. I don't know. I haven't talked to Frank yet, but these are the types of things you may see in the coming weeks. And yeah, if this, if this all keeps up, right. I'm just putting in my, uh, like, some shadows and stuff over here, guys, and my purples. So I'm just blocking it in with the straight up purple and then I'll just kind of wet blend it in uh, or, or stipple layer it in just because I'm trying to get the effect down so you guys can see. 
Shadow Raven, you're in my head. How did you know I was going to have a, a stinky socks session segment with Bug Lips? Oh, no. That's That was actually number one on the list. Uh-oh. <laughs> Achilles Blade, do I ever say, damn, I'm good at this? Yes, but usually not on something like this. Uh, usually it's on the competition models when something finally clicks and I like look at it and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and sometimes when there's a really frustrating model, like I think when I was painting one of the Forge World uh, Primarchs. <laughs> there's hmm? there's C-Not. C-Not's hanging out with us. Oh, Spoiler hi, C-Not. Spoiler alert. Um, but uh, I don't know. There was, there was a, I think it was um, the uh, uh, a Lehman Russ when I painted the Forge World Lehman Russ and I was at paint club and I was like, damn it, I'm one of the best in the world and this face is still giving me trouble. How do normal people cope? <laughs> That's probably like the most, you know, like uh, Anne is a good painter moment that I can think of. Usually I'm much more humble. Um, but seriously, I was like, damn, I'm good at this. And this is this is hard. Like, how did gamers like paint this model? So out of curiosity, Ms. Anne, yeah. would you, uh, if it got set up in the next couple of weeks, would you would you do a uh, remote D&D game? Yeah, I could do a remote D&D game. Okay. Well, because I was thinking about maybe inviting a couple of streamers, too, to do this, make this kind of a, a big, fun hodgepodge, you know? Yeah. So, like, for instance, since c -Not's in the chat, hey, c -Not, have you ever uh, played D&D? &D? <laughs> uh, unre unrelated, do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so shield. Yay, shield. We're, we're working it here. We're getting our sunrise. It's kind of a sunrise shield, right? Let's see, I'm going to put some highlights at the bottom. Since I decided to go kind of NMM with it, I guess I have to put a reflective, uh, an under-reflection. See, now it's now regretting that he ever got into our chat, Dustin. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. He's regretting having said anything. <laughs> uh, now, when I say D&D, &D, I mean, uh, what I actually mean is, uh, oh, look, he's played Pathfinder. And so, so, for instance, I don't mean specifically D&D. &D, I mean any sort of role-playing. So you could see Pathfinder. You could see... You know, Starfinder. You could see all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah, we, we could just do a fun. We could just do a fun, fun like hour, hour and a half session just for combat or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it could be some one-offs. Uh, yeah, actually, that would is, be fun, I mean, Justin, to do like um, just do a one-off sessions of a bunch of games to try them out. I'm okay with that. It's the the point, I guess, of the statement is as we as we start to evolve with kind of and adapt to what's going on, we don't want to cut any entertainment for you guys whatsoever. Like we're we're trying absolute. I am trying my absolute hardest to keep as many shows going as possible, as remote as possible. And that means if we got to come up with different ways to stream and different things you guys have never seen, then that may be the case. But we're gonna try to keep you guys as entertained for as long as possible. Yes, we shall see what we can do. I mean, really, the, you know, sky's the limit once I get set up out in Cali. I mean, I will have some Correct. extra time, so, and uh, since I get paid for the time I stream, it's, uh, you know, it's a no-brainer to, to stream a little more if Justin needs me to jump in and do something. Uh, Abs absolutely, see not. I'll uh, I'll reach out to you if I if I get uh, some more, some more. Yeah, I agree. I this, agree, see not. It's timing is uh, the question, right? Correct. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts here to make this work, but we're going to try to make it work. Well, and I'm going to be doing commission work, and I know c -Not does, that's how he, he rolls his commission work, you know, and stuff like that. So we all have to get in our uh, our Patreons as appropriate or our commission work um, before we do a bunch of uh, other stuff. So, all right, now I need another highlight. Do, do, do. Let's get a highlight here and a highlight there. And we could even potentially pull in uh, members of the audience to, to kind of watch or play or do whatever, too. Like, there's, oh. there's the sky's the limit. Congrats, Cena. Like, Sina. Into... like oh, baby, yes, also baby that. is coming. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. And I hope that uh, with the baby coming soon that, you know, you and the baby and your wife are all uh, healthy and things are things are all positive and you get home with as, as much as possible, right, without any minimal exposure since the healthcare system, et cetera. Could do a midwife, actually. That's true. You could do that. You guys going to midwife, uh, c -Not? Hey, c -Not, are you going to sculpt, like, a scene from the birth? Like, you should do something cool like that. <laughs> the pandemic baby. That's just my style. <laughs> 
I would say that the typical uh, sculpted scene with uh, with the baby, isn't it like the old Bill Crosby, uh, you know, the wife grabbing the husband and strangling him while she's giving birth, saying, this is your fault. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, so again, purple and yellow highlighted. I'm working on it. Yeah, it takes some futzing, as you can see. You're trying to make two absolutely opposite on the color wheel colors work, but the purple, the reddish purple, does work with the uh, with the yellow quite well. I'm gonna add some yellow, some white to that yellow, and I need to add a little bit down here. I'm losing got a lot of purple, losing a bit of yellow, so you gotta balance it, blend it in. I'm doing a lot of really rough wet blending, so I'm getting a little chunky here, but you guys get the idea. There we go, that smoothed it out just a tad. So yeah, so you can always use your complementary colors to, to shade and highlight, and it works. It works quite well. Orange and blue are probably the, both the hardest and the easiest, because orange, um, browns, a lot of browns count as muted oranges, so if you just take your blue and shade it with um, some orangey browns, you can get some beautiful natural effects. Doo -doo -doo, just getting some more highlights on these little bits. you know, fun. So really, I mean, to successfully shade with complementary colors, it involves a bit of experimentation. You've got to kind of figure out, you know, mix together a bunch of purples and yellows and figure out like which one looks good to you as far as the transitional color it makes. Like I really like this dark purpley, this dark purpley yellow orangey thing that I get when I do these mixes. So for me, um, I really like this combo, but you may like a different combo. So, I mean, mess around with candlelight yellow, mess around with canary yellow, uh, see what you can do, right? So there is no, the sky is the limit. People get scared to just experiment. I have a little, um, like a watercolor pad that I just mess around with colors on. I highly recommend that. It removes the fear because you're not directly painting a mini and you can like learn which colors make great mixes and then you have a record of it. So next time you want to paint something, you can be like, oh yeah, I mixed that color last time and here's the swatch and the formula so I can use that this time. You know, so keep a little record book. It's, it's so easy when you're just messing around with colors and let yourself play and don't worry about being brilliant at it. That's an order. Do, 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 do. Just doing little little highlights here to get Mr. Shield looking a little better. So yeah, there, that's not bad. I might use a tiny bit of this up top even. Let's see. Just a little bit to darken an area up here a little. So that's uh that's looking pretty good. Yeah, bye Corsair. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good idea, Al Capone. It really is. Because, I mean, you don't even have to be, like, real methodical about it. Just, you know, make, like, kind of an appointment for yourself, like, every, you know, every weekend, maybe every Saturday night before you start really painting or before you start doing whatever. Um, just sit down and just mess with colors. Grab a couple. Mix some stuff. See what it looks like. Um, develop your gut instinct for which colors mix well together. And uh, it will put you in good stead as you continue your painting development. That and push yourself outside of your comfort zone every once in a while. It doesn't have to be on a model. Although if you do discover a really cool, like analogous scheme and you decide you want to run with it, I mean, run with it. What's the worst thing that could happen? You don't like it as much? Well, that can happen just when you're using regular colors that you like every day. Let's see here. Um... Yeah, Twistedoma. Over a month, I would contact. Even with um, even with all that's going on, over a month seems like maybe it's lost or something, or held up in customs, if it's an overseas order. Which overseas stuff definitely is getting a bit dicey. So, I just heard that Games Workshop uh, closed down today because of the lockdown. And all the Space Wolf players are very sad because they just pre-ordered their awesome new box set. And I have to feel for them because it pretty it is such an awesome new box set that I almost bought it. Or I almost pre-ordered it, so. Hey, D. Clearman. 
Good to see ya. Oh, War Warlord Games closed today too. Yeah, Buglips. Yeah, it's starting to reverberate. Well, Reaper is still open. Damn it, we're gonna we're gonna stick it out and try to hope that nobody gets sick. Yeah, because I believe even with a lot of the lockdown orders, you're allowed to run with like a skeleton crew of, of no more than ten people. So right. that's why I was saying that like yeah, Re Reaper can totally do that. Yeah, not only would those 10 people be like 10, 10 plus feet away from each other at all times, knowing the way that we, because we have been, our response here has been fantastic. Like we have doors open so people don't have to touch handles like during the regular work hours. It, it's been pretty fantastic. We even left the bathroom doors open. No, I'm kidding. We didn't do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, uh, it's pretty easy to just use your sleeve or something to push the door it, open. It, it is, it is. But we we have honestly, I think that our response here, and this was before any of the lockdowns, it's been pretty fantastic. Um, so that being said, I, I think that we could probably run with a skeleton crew to at least process the orders during the day. So that's why if we have to prioritize orders over free ship outs, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's it's we don't want to do that, but it could be much slower. Let's put it that way. Yeah, we'll just we'll just play it. I mean, we're gonna try. We're gonna try to do the best by you guys. Is what it comes down to, right? Because Reaper is grateful for your business, especially in these times. Um, our internet has picked up, which is good because all of our distributors have shut down. So all the money that we normally get from distribution, it pretty much evaporated. Um, so we're uh, we're very grateful to all you guys who are placing orders still, and we're trying really hard to still have. I think Ed said on Reaper Live last week it was still just a two, like a day turnaround, wasn't there a two day turnaround? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so we're still we're trying hard to uh, keep it good. Thanks for stopping by, Kobolds. Yeah, thank you. See you, Kobolds. All right. Hey, Jojen, how you doing? Yeah, I feel much. I mean, I felt fine then for the most part. It was just the damn cough that wouldn't go away. But yeah, I'm I'm good now. Thanks for asking. I am just trying to get some of this this a little bit cleaned up. We're right at the end of the stream. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them. Um, but essentially, what this comes down to is that like shading and with complementary colors is not like terribly hard the hardest part sometimes is to get them to work uh to blend smoothly but you can do that with a little bit of wet blending or just thinning them down quite a bit here i'm working with thicker paint on the shield so it's gotten me a little bit of a quandary um just trying to make it work together so if i was smart i would start thinning my paint and do a bit of wet blending my purple got very strong there too and my white got hard, but I decided to try to do an NMM, so that was my problem. I shouldn't have gotten ambitious, guys. I shouldn't. So let's put some real purple on this. Let's put some real purple on the shadows. Not just mess around with this brownish color here. Let's get some serious purple. Can always knock it back if it gets too purpley. <laughs> yeah. look at that bug lips was uh prepping months and months ago yeah yeah um Kareniko, it was uh dragon red and dragon green and then i mixed a little bit of naga green 94 13 with a little bit of lantern yellow and white for the highlight but uh dragon red and dragon green work really well together the dragon colors go figure Let's see here. Let's put more purple down here. Yeah, exactly, Jojen. It's, I mean, it, not only, and Anne and I talked about this yesterday, that not only is this the, the COVID-19 crap, but, like, it's been a really rough allergy season in a long time, as well as just a bad flu season. So standard allergy drainage could have people looking at you like a crazy person, right? Yeah, exactly. But you, you could just be coughing because pollen is a, a B-I-T-C-H, you know? Yep. Yeah. You spell it out. Yeah, yeah I, I have a, a yes. I have a friend who's who pretty much has just that. He, he coughs when all the flowers and trees start going, and so he's like, kind of a pariah right now and staying out of away from things because he doesn't want people to think he's plagued and running around. Alrighty. So there, we got some more purple in there, and that seriously darkened things down. But you can do it. You can do it. Now, I could continue to futz with this pretty infinitely until I got it exactly where I wanted it. Um, but yeah, purple and yellow can, can make some very interesting colors. And it's not necessarily going to be realistic, but it can be cool, right? So it's all in what you are aiming for um, as far as your painting goes. So I'm going to make a glaze with this yellow. 
just for a second and glaze it over everything to knock it all down and see what I get. Also be bold, Mutts of, putts around, don't care what you're doing. Try to, right now I just glazed and I grabbed a, a wet brush and kind of pulled the paint down and away from a whole bunch of areas. Move fast with glazing. You don't want to be stuck there when uh, you know what, it Anne? starts to dry. Yeah? I think if I were quarantined for the next year, I still couldn't manage what's on this damn shield that you've produced. <laughs> it looks better on the camera than it does in person, I bet. But maybe I'm just hard on myself. No, I mean, it looks uh, like everyone else. It's like Achilles Blade said earlier. Do you ever just look at it and go, well, damn. Damn, I'm good. No, <laughs> I often don't because I hold myself to very high standards. But I, there, I definitely get the quiet satisfaction feeling. Like I get that um, where I'm like, yes, I did good on this one. You know, that's that's the kind of what I'm more prone to. Um, but yeah, so a little bit more white. Thanks for joining the that's hobby fun. there, uh, Double X. I, oh, I yeah. would call you, ah, uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to call you. Yeah, we're not going to scream. We're not going to call you the scream. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you just started painting today. That's awesome. Well, the first rule of painting is to just like paint and don't care what people think. And if you like it, then it's all good. And then the second rule of painting is, is to try new things and to find painter friends to do it with because that's uh, fun. Kuroneko, that could be a very real possibility in the uh, the coming weeks or month or so. I Justin mean, tries to uh, get try. Justin tries not to suck. There we go. And here's the thing, and I won't even use the kits to do it because we've already got Sadie doing that cool aspect. I'm just gonna like wing it, and then you guys can teach me in chat. Yeah, we could troubleshoot you. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. Oh yes, it would. It would be a fun nightmare. <laughs> oh boy. I need to get you my random uh, painting counter color and counter tables before you before you start because then you can use them. There, there, look, shield, yay! And I did take down my purple a little bit so I can even sneakily reintroduce it. I'm gonna thin it more now though. Do 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 do. So yeah, that's that's actually looking pretty okay. I'm okay with this. Like part of me wants more purple though. It wants the purple to come back. I lost some of it because I glazed. That's the thing. Glazes will always slightly impact what you're doing. A little bit of purple back in. There. I like the, I like the complementary color, the shadow, to be really subtle a lot of the times. Um, I don't want it necessarily to just blow your mind right when you look at it. I like it to be kind of like an, an Easter egg where... You're like, wow, what is that? Oh my God, that's purple in there. You know, I like that. I like the surprise. I like surprises in mini painting. Where you, uh, where you think you know what's going on, but then when you get close to it, you're like, oh wow, that's what I like. It's my favorite thing. It's why I like doing textures because then I can hide some really fine texture work on new miniature. And then people think it looks good from a distance, but then when they get close, it kind of goes, oh my God, blow, blow your mind kind of thing. I like that. That's like Soldier 76. That's my Overwatch statue where he looked good from a distance, but then you got up close and you saw the leather texture and you were just, your brain just disconnected. That was, that's, that's my favorite when I can do that. I'm really looking forward to having a lot of painting time after I move. Alrighty. Also, uh, some breaking news. Yeah. Breaking Reaper concentric news. Oh, okay. Um, we're we're not going to have a Terrain Tuesday this afternoon with Ed. Oh, okay. Um, Ed is very busy with you know organizing other stuff, which is reasonable. Like th that's not only is this just a normal busy time for us because we have standard phones five like stuff to get done right because all everything is still moving forward right. So he is just infinitely busier, especially with the COVID nineteen stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If this is not COVID-19 related, don't think that it is because it's really not. He is just stupid busy. So, in fact, and I know you're busy packing and stuff, but if you really want to, you could do some stuff for terrain again this afternoon if you'd like to. Um, I'm not putting you on the spot. I but... was going to come in and clean out the office. So... Oh, okay. Well, then never yeah. mind, guys. No no terrain Tuesday today. We will resume tomorrow morning that after said, the stream. With... Yeah, that said, if Ed wants to be permanently off the hook, all he has to do is say the word, and I could be convinced to take it over on Tuesdays. Like, once I moved. 
It's up to him. I know he likes having uh, his uh, time with the community, so he might uh, prefer to keep it once he's a little less busy. But he is also the CEO, so he, he is terribly busy um, most times. I'm adding more purple. Let's see, I'm going to add more purple here. It's almost a lilac purple. It's much lighter. That could be what I needed. Maybe I needed lavender. Everybody needs lavender in their life, right? I'm just having fun, guys. This is really cool. I'm having a good time. I'm introducing a lot of like funky colors into my uh, my weird gold NMM. Um, because that's what it's turned into, <laughs> is weird gold NMM. Very weird. Very purpley and weird. Has some pink in it. Getting a little crazy here. But I'm, uh, I'm actually liking it quite a bit. This may be something I have to work with uh, on an actual, like, you know, competition piece or something. Could be fun, actually, if you were doing, like, an angel. Could be fun to do this sort of uh, gold NMM. And I happen to have an awesome angel that I just got from Limbo. They managed to ship it out of Europe just before the crunch hit. So I'm very uh, happy. All right. How's that look? What do you think? Good? Yay? It, it's not quite pink enough for rose gold. Uh, if I put a lot of lavender in it, maybe right. But it would still be off a little bit because rose gold's definitely got a pinkish orange look to it. Where to get the Razix faction info for Reaper Warlord? Gosh, I don't know. Oh, there you go, Robin. Surprise your yeah, surprise your wife. That sounds great. Looks like a sunset. Yeah, I know Nomad Zeke, right? That's what I'm thinking, like angels. It could be good for the gin, the ginny model we have. Um uh, I would say I would consider it gold, but definitely a supernatural type of gold freestyle. Uh, that's why I suggested, like, this sort of armor on and, like, an angel or other divine being could be really good, or a solar. Um, this would be good colors for it. Because it's just, it's obviously not natural gold, but it still carries, like, it's gold um, more than any other color. So, yeah, I would say, yeah, sunrise or sunset. Yeah, you could go for paladin, yep, because holy. Yep. It needs a silhouette of a moose. I could put that right in the middle, Maldrak. Actually, it should be on the horizon line, which I did fudge a little bit here, so I need to actually bring this up a little bit. But uh, I, could, I could put a tiny moose down there, I suppose. Yeah, Blood Splatter can be, like, fun and nerve-wracking at the same time. Um, it, it depends on what you use it. Obviously, the easiest way is Blood for the Blood God, but then uh, kind of look at splatter effects and kind of use your, like, use the flick your brush technique and and look at how blood sprays and see if you can duplicate that. Because just splotching right on there is like not, not always the best look. But yeah, blood effects otherwise. I find that minimal blood effects are more um, effective than a lot of blood. Just like choose a couple areas. Yeah, cheap brush and flick it. Yep. I like to kind of do that on a, a paper on the side, Teslanch of the mini, like just over on the side. And then I look at the pattern and I just try to paint the pattern on there. But that can, uh... yeah, full carry at the prom. We'll just dip it then, Maldrak. <laughs> uh, alrighty, guys, there you go. There's some complimentary color shading. Huzzah, we did it. Oh, I, I promised you a weasel. Also, that's, uh, I'd like to say, and that's the thing is cool as hell. Oh, the shield? Yeah, Thank the you. Shield. I, I, I think uh, you paint a lot of cool stuff on here, but I have to say I think that shield is my favorite. No oh, offense wow. to the weasel. No offense no to the weasel. No offense to the dragon. Weasel says. I, just, I, really, I really like the couple of colors there. Yes, Cat Snake is here. Ferret. Ferret weasel. Um, I'm glad that you like this, Justin. That's cool. I'm very pleased that you like it. I've always had a weird fascination with like metals though like when it comes to to painting uh -huh. the things that have almost drawn me into the hobby are things like dragons with shiny scales and yeah i could never obviously achieve what i see so it's often i don't want to say discouraged but it's you know it, yeah you gotta work at it right yeah and your eye is yeah there. yeah your eye is always better and this is something for all of you who are um like newbie or or intermediate to remember is your eye is always going to get better first 
and then your hand is going to get better. So don't get discouraged if you can't paint what you see right away. It's, uh, it's gonna, it'll come, right? But you, you're always going to see your eye just start to develop. Your eye for techniques, your eye for colors, your eye for, you know, how things actually look in, you know, real life or how shadows look, how highlights look. You're going to get a sense of that earlier than you actually can duplicate it. And don't worry, your hand will catch up with your eye. You just got to keep trying. So don't get discouraged. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, Sky Earth MM is coming up on my Patreon, actually. I have an Android uh, model from Life Miniatures that's just amazing. I can't wait to start, but I'm forcing myself to wait until I get out to California to start her. Alrighty. Alrighty. Let's see here. Yeah, so okay, guys, to remind you of my schedule, um, we're going to do two shows tomorrow on Wednesday and a show on Thursday, and then I am pretty much have to start just packing everything in sight. Uh, so I have to curtail at that point. Uh, and then we will be, I'll be a couple weeks out of circulation because I'm going to be packing and then I'm going to be driving. And then I got to set up my new place out in California so that I actually have a streaming environment out there. So hopefully we are aiming for Monday, the 13th of April. Hopefully then I will be back. If I have time in the meantime, I might have time for a short stream here or there, depending on Justin's schedule, uh, depending on my schedule. If I get packed up early, maybe we'll do a couple of fun streams in the middle of that before I break down my painting area. It's gonna, this is gonna be one of the last areas to break down in my entire house, just because I need to still paint um, and I'm gonna be driving all of this, except for the desk with me. So it can wait to be, to be broken down to the last minute. But everything else, you know, has to go, so. Monday the 13th. Yes, I know. It's even worse than Friday the 13th, right? I always thought. At least Friday the 13th has the redeeming quality of being a Friday. But, uh, yeah. So, do, do, do. Yeah, see, I've been trying not to be a procrastinator of Vigo's peeps. I, my movers don't come till April 3rd. I've got 10 full days, and I've already, I've got a, the corner of my room is, is just a huge stack of boxes right now. So, it's, uh, I've probably, I, I packed up one entire room. Um, and I've started on my big closet, so it's, and my, my bedroom has very little in it other than the bed and my nightstand, so, and a bookshelf, so hopefully everything will move very fast. Um, a, uh, complete side note, Ms. Ann. Yes? Um, complete side note for this. Uh, so uh, one thing I wanted to comment on earlier, because we were talking about it, but it just mm -hmm. reminded me, because I got another notification of a live stream. Ah. Um, we, we take such care to live stream stuff, um with quality like i take personal responsibility to stream it with quality as far mm -hmm. as audio and video and everything yes and i find it incredibly annoying and semi-frustrating when all of these local counties and places are supposed to have pretty good funding mm -hmm. to give pro public announcements and mm -hmm. all of their audio is crap <laughs> so like all of these live He's streams such a it's nerd. Hard, they're, they're hard to understand because these guys are using mics that were designed in the 80s and they're they're yeah. across the room yeah so it's just you know I, i'd like to point out um our that you're a nerd? Streaming, yeah, I'm a nerd, and our streaming capabilities <laughs> are better than anything in the DFW, I would like to point Anything out. in the Just DFW area. We anything, are above it. We, we are above it. So. Yes, yes. So, well, you Not and me. my own horn. Not, yeah, yes, you, exactly. I mean, I don't know. I haven't compared myself with other YouTubers or Twitchers of mini painting, so I don't know how I, uh, how I compare. But yes, audio-wise, hopefully I do not suck. Uh, yes, we're, we all have nerdiness, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that makes sense, uh, David D. Clearman. Um, I guess you, you're moving uh, and starting to pack now. You've got the time, right? So do it. I mean, and, and better yet, if you start now, then you can start slowly sorting stuff, right? You don't have to rush stuff. You don't have to pack stuff just because you're in a hurry. You can actually, you know, rehome stuff. You can, you can throw out stuff that you really haven't looked at in five years, you know, stuff like that. That's what I'm taking the time to do uh, with all my early packing. I was being very picky about what was actually going with me, especially because I know I'm moving into a relatively a lot, a lot smaller place. I mean, I'm moving from a two bedroom house into a two bedroom apartment. So yeah, I, I also am a purger. You know why? Because I've moved too many dang times. I try to lose a oh. third of my life every time I move. I will happily throw away every, everything but my computer. Like, I'm not kidding. I'll sleep on the floor if I need to. I will super <laughs> purge. I hate moving. To I hate stuff. Like, like and I've, I've, I've started acquiring a lot less stuff. Like, minis, really nice minis. They can still get me. But um, I mostly move to Kindle for my books now, unless it's an author I love and it's a special edition or it's something like that, you know. Um, you know, and I've, I've just tried to cut down on just acquiring crap. So... 
Shadow Revan, I, I do not have any painted minis to purge. Um, I am, I'm packing most of, most of the ones there. I'm packing all of the ones from the streams uh, so that we can uh, auction them off at ReaperCon, hopefully. Um, assuming ReaperCon stays intact, it had better because, you know, I have to come and say hi to everybody. Uh, and I'm bringing all my stuff. I'm really hoping to get uh, inroads on my shelf of shame after I move. That's kind of one of my, one of my jobs that I want to uh, make myself do. Bye, Ren. Bye, Rhonda. Have a great day, too. Yeah, yeah. stay happy, happy uh, safe, and healthy. Yes, indeedy. Oh, yeah. Uh, what camera is that for my mini cam? That's a document. Yeah, it's a document camera, El Capone. It's, uh, it's an IPVO uh, VZ-X, and I bought it because I did... Um, I made, did a lot of research and essentially was looking for a document cam like what Reaper used, but a more modern copy. And I read from this one, I read all the reviews and teachers were using it all day with no problems and it gave great resolution. So I felt like the $300 price tag, it was not cheap, but the $300 price tag I felt was justified because they were already, they've been using it, you know, day after day after day with no problems with the system. Um, and I, I love it. I love the sharpness and the clarity. I could never get this with my webcams. Uh, so I'm, I'm in love with the little thing. If it, if it kick, when it kicks off, I'll get another one. <laughs> you ready, Miss Ann? Yeah. All right. Who are you going to raid? We are going to be raiding my man. Uh, Michael. yeah, it is, it is a USB Al Capone. It's just, it also comes with their own software if you want to adjust it more, but yeah, it's USB. So which one? Mike who? My, Mike Disney. Oh, okay. Yay, Mike. The absolute awesome Mike Disney. Yes. Super cool guy. One of the nicest dudes I have ever met in my life. Super Indeedy. cool. Indeedy. Give him a follow. Spread the Reaper love. Um, just hang out in his right. channel because I'm sure yep. it'll be fun. Hang out, so. guys. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. Um, I might, just to let everyone know who's still in chat right there, I might do something special from home from the channel uh, at 3 o'clock today. Maybe maybe from home I'll just run a handful of marble games or something for you guys, and then I'll just do a voiceover for it or something. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll see if I can do that. Uh, maybe busy with other things, but you guys can stop on by at 3 and see if we're, uh, see if we're doing stuff. But uh, thank you guys again for coming out. Thank you for always watching us, and uh, thank you for helping us hit 100K views because that's amazing. And uh, you guys just keep being awesome. Oh, and catch up on your painting as long as you're not, you know, super busy. Thanks, guys.